Without further ado, here is Andrew for what's new in EDU. How's That's that, good. Andrew? See, we're yeah. like the production company. Look at that. With skills <laughs> like that, Amanda. Uh, good to be here, everyone. Let's give Amanda a break. She did a fantastic job at showing this, this on-the-cusp technology there, which is also uh, quite powerful, quite powerful. Now, uh, in saying that, remember Copilot, right, for the web is free. Okay, because I know it can be quite confusing. There's Copilot that you pay for and Copilot and offers through. Everything Amanda showed is free, right? It, it, it's free, you know, it's included with your A3 and A5 and there's no paid SKU to do that copilot.microsoft.com teaching engineering prompts. All right, so I want to make that really clear. Does not yeah, mean it'll one. work in everyone's tenant solely because different schools and different tenants turn on things when they're ready. But it's worth having a conversation with your school to find out uh, at what point or where they are in that journey. All right. Because, yeah, again, if you can really start to, you know, train the trainer with your school and dive in as a faculty leader or as a school leader, it's definitely worth having deeper conversations on how this technology can enhance teaching and learning practice and save time, of course. So welcome to What's New. Amanda, what time? What time do you want me to wrap this up just as we're tweaking the time? Uh, 11.25, so you've got about 50 minutes. 11.25, so New South Wales, 1.25. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. All right, let's go. One, I'm going to... No, 1.15. Sorry, 1.15. 1.15. Yeah, Perfect. Yep. I'm going to uh, do a bit of PowerPoint Live, which is this. I'm going to draw over the PowerPoint as we talk about these and also do a bit of live sharing, all right? Because I love a good live demo and anything can go wrong, right, with a live demo. So I'm gonna show you some tools that are right on the cusp of being released. I don't have definitive timelines, but based, based on what you see me do, you'll see that they're very, very, very close to, to, to being uh, released and we'll keep you informed, right, with some of these announcements. Now, the very first one I wanna point out, Minecraft is on the rise in every education institution that I see uh, year after year. We have a number of Minecraft workshops that are coming up, run by the lovely uh, Standout Education. Uh, I will put this into the chat, all right? So if you're looking for free Minecraft PD, we have a few sessions running in March, again, free by Standout Education. That is a clickable link, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So you can click that link right there you do see a hyperlink on these slides unless i say so otherwise um uh feel free to click those links but yeah they are free feel free to register for them so um that will be really really good to uh dive into the deeper world of minecraft i heard they just released frozen planet 3 and i've seen where they're going i can't say anymore i can't say anymore where they're going with ai and minecraft and things like that but i can't say anymore so watch that space so it's very very exciting can you imagine the potential you know npcs and things like that so let's let's dive in now i'm not going to give this too much love because you know about this you've seen this you've heard about this there is a new version of teams okay um and i'm putting this out here because if you are using teams in your school and they haven't swapped over to the new version please tap them on the shoulder we're using the new version today. You should be using the new version. When you see my demos in the web version, it's a new version, right? Um, it's lighter, it's faster, it's more effective for laptops, more effective for desktops. I would talk to your IT about using the new version of Teams. Now, it's still obviously uh, being updated month by month, but uh, there are some really big benefits of using the new version of Teams. And after I show you what Teams is doing, with the teaching and learning space, I highly recommend. All right, there are some timelines that you need to be aware about in terms of using new teams. Um, so end of life for old teams is June 30th of this year, okay, right? Um, and new teams you can start using today. So it's definitely worth communicating to your tenancies, to your orgs about that end of life and uh, you know, discussing the transition or just flicking over the toggle to use that new Teams version. Okay, let's talk about AI for educators in Microsoft Teams on that note. And this is really exciting because Microsoft Teams is one of our fastest growing apps of all time. And we're putting some very powerful artificial intelligence into Microsoft Teams, right? We're adding context-aware content, right? Educator will be in control, so it's education 
specific, which you'll see. Uh, to boost productivity, the main point of putting AI in Teams is to save the educated time. And of, of course, giving your admins more control. You might not be ready for some of the AI generation features. And we want to make sure that that isn't a whole deterrent not to use Teams, that you, you as an admin or your school admin can turn them off until you're ready in your journey, right? You do more of Amanda's amazing prompt engineering courses, then you might flick the switch and certain features will turn on. So we are adding more control. Don't think that this is just, you know, it's on by default and you have to use it. There is tenant enabled control for AI integration in Microsoft Teams. Now, I have some videos here on the PowerPoint deck, all right? It's things such as generate assignments with AI. I'm going to show you these live. I, I figured these might be a little bit better with uh, a live demo. And we'll talk through these because I think these are quite exciting. All right. Like a video is great, but if we can do it live, generate rubric, rubrics with AI, or with Al, right? Generate classroom modules with AI. Okay. As you can see here, adding a module and getting some AI prompts. Uh, generating comprehension questions using AI and using uh, Reflect uh, to do some AI stuff. So on that note, let's do this live, shall we? All right. I love a good live demo because this is really exciting. As an educator, I think this is really, really compelling. And it's also really useful to see where we are going, right? Remember, this is a toggle. So it, it won't be on by default, doesn't have to be on by default, only when you are ready, when your tenant is ready, when your school is ready. Okay, let's dive into it. You can see here I've got a, a number of teams here um, all ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm going to click on Mr. Bowser's Bonanza, <laughs> the one I've made earlier before. So I'm going to click on that. You can see here I'm using the new Teams 2.0. You can see all the different aesthetics are very nice. It's very quick, very snappy. If I click on assignments here, all right, tried and true way of making a Microsoft Teams assignment. We go down here to create, all right, and I can make an existing assignment. I can make a brand new quiz powered by Microsoft Forms. I can make a new blank assignment. And this is where a lot of my time right, would be absorbed when I was doing this for my classes, for my students. So uh, let's, you know, hypothetically, I'm a science teacher, K to 12, right? So we're doing a presentation uh, on the planets of Mars. Let's do a, a, a presentation on the planet Mars. Uh, shout out to St. Benedict's. I actually got to attend one of their classes, and they were doing a research project on Mars. That's where I got the idea from, right? So a presentation on the planet of Mars. Now I'm going to write some instructions here. So I'm going to say, um, design a, whoops, 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 Mr. Bowser's the hot hotkeys, design a PowerPoint presentation on the planet's Mars. Make sure you research your facts, provide uh, interesting information around its climate uh, and uh, position in the solar system, and then write a report, okay, that uh, uh, goes with the PowerPoint, all right? Nice, nice on the fly. <laughs> you know, that's basically how you start to write instructions. You really kind of work it out as you go through and refine it. But you can see here down the bottom, some generative AI has, has popped up. Add steps, add sparkles, add learning objectives, clarify concepts, emphasize key, just to help me get that flow. Now I've designed that a bit fluffy on purpose to show you how the AI can kick in and help. So I can click add detail and you can see here it's generating some detail based on the information that I've already put in there and look at this. Talk about saving teachers time. Uh, in this assignment you'll be designing a PowerPoint presentation on the planet Mars. The goal of this assignment is to research, they said it much better than I did, and present interesting information about Mars including its climate position in the solar system. Full stop. Even the grammar is much better than me. Uh, I'm a history teacher by the way, not English. <laughs> to complete this assignment you'll need to, to follow these steps. Step one, research. Step two, design your PowerPoint presentation. Step three, write a report. That is exactly what I wanted them to do, but I just wrote it in a really messy, what, one sentence, one or two sentences. It has broken it down into steps. Now, I can go through and regenerate it 
a different version of this. I can go through and customize it, right? It, as Amanda said, it's never going to be 100% to what you imagine in your mind, especially with my one-sentence prompt engineering. But talk about saving time. So uh, I could keep that. And then I can add a bit of sparkle, add some learning objectives. Um, there's there's a lot of different controls here. What grade is it for? So I could change, you know, if it's a higher education or if it's maybe for grade four, it will change the way it words this particular assignment. So if I add a bit of sparkle, right, uh, to you're probably wondering, what does that even mean? What like what do you mean by adding some sparkle? It prettifies it. I want to put it that way. It makes it look pretty. It puts emojis and things all over it, um, which, you know, I was very interested to see what did add sparkle mean too. But isn't that incredible? Like now it's become a visual assignment piece for our visual learners. And then, of course, students can use accessibility tools such as immersive reader. Now, this will blow your mind, right, because you can just imagine all the work that you do throughout a school term and how this can really... I guess, fill in the details and have you refine those details and add a bit of sparkle, of course, uh, with the emojis as you develop this assignment. And I love that. I love, I, I put emojis in everything, you've probably noticed, but I absolutely love um, some of these, this AI here. So we can clarify the concepts, for example. And as I go through, I'm editing and I'm designing, but I'm giving you a live demo on how some of these uh, can look. And now, look what it's done here. Use images, let's put a little uh, an emoji of an image, and videos, a little emoji of a video, to illustrate your points. And that is clarifying each step on what to do. It's adding that specific detail where before it was just a, a quite a vague, you know, write a report, blah, blah, blah. So that is awesome, right? Absolutely sensational. Uh, so excited for this to roll out the teams. I know it's on the tip of your tongue. When? <laughs> when? Soon. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question everyone hates uh, or answer everyone hates soon. Now I'm going to add some learning objectives, right? Add some learning objectives in there about what they're going to achieve doing this assignment. Uh, look, I, I can't say when. I can't say when. We will uh, let you know, uh, obviously, when we get that information, when we're allowed to share that information. But you can see it's pretty much here, ready to rock and roll. Uh, there's my learning objectives that I've added there. And of course, I can go through and customize that. Isn't that, I'm going to say the word, bodacious. Very, very cool. And you'll see here, we can even now add social emotional learning, right? Check-ins, post assignment, exit tickets, if you will, around the assignment. So I can turn that on and I can save this assignment as a draft. And then I can reopen this assignment to work on it or clarify it later. Isn't that sensational? Really excited about how the AI is coming into the education practice, especially when you're designing units of work, modules of work, or even assignments on that work. So it is also coming to our classwork, which is our brand new modulated uh, system for creating uh, versions of work. So I could say, for example, this is on uh, the Mars presentation. I'm going to save this one here. And then we'll have an AI, as you saw in the video, which will be able to generate different topics on this. Now, I can't show you this one live. You have to have a look at the video there because we are rolling this one out too. But it will come with the classwork, very similar to what you saw for this time, as you generate the modulated aspects with AI. Now, I'm going to go away from the assignments aspect and give you another live demo that's more or less around our learning accelerate especially our reading progress okay so i'm going to jump into uh the assignments here all right i'm going to make another assignment but this time instead of being an open-ended research project i'm going to click create new assignments okay and then under attach we're going to select reading progress for our literacy needs okay so i'm going to click reading progress and you'll notice here we have this new generate reading passage button so before you could import your own word or pdf which you still can you can browse the sample library of over 400 different types of copyright free text from reworks or you can generate something completely original right using our generate custom passage feature so what is the topic in this uh, regard let's stick to our space theme because they're just here the presentation on mars what is the age group I selected, I think, around 
uh, year four or grade four. So, you know, we're looking at uh, a year nine student-ish, year 10 or, you know, in terms of age. So let's let's go eight. Uh, length of words for the reading passage, 200 to 300. Let's keep it quite, quite concise for this demo. And the language that we want it to be generated in. You can see we support many different languages. Uh, we speak Australian English in this part, sorry, New Zealanders, uh, where I'm presenting from right now. Uh, so you can see here, passage be translated and maybe regional diff, just a little warning, but it does it quite nicely. And we generate our passage, all right? So it's generating completely original reading passage for our students to read. And as you can see here, this is completely original, right? So this passage does not exist on the internet. It is a completely original passage for my students to read. And I can change the complexity of the passage. So if I feel like that's a little bit too complex. I can bring that down a level, regenerate the AI magic, and then it will change the length of syllables and the type of words, right, that we have in our passage here. So you can see it's simplified that a fair bit. So I'm going to use this passage, right? You can see here, the Hubble telescope is an instrument we use to explore space. NASA built it and launched in 1990, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I need to change my language there. But I'm going to enter the reading level, just for argument's sake, the genre, which is fiction. I want them to have three uh, attempts. Uh, we've got a time limit, two minutes, uh, opt-in, cut-off, pronunciation sensitivity, uh, reading coach. I'm going to add comprehension. And here's our second generative update regarding literacy needs. We can test the fluency and the accuracy with the help of AI to save educators time, but we can also use generative AI to test their understanding of what they just read, okay? So previously, we would make our own questions, all right? So, you know, the Hubble telescope is an infinite where we explore space. So my question would be, what is the Hubble telescope, right? That could be a comprehension question to make sure they understood what they just read. But I'm going to generate, let's say, four different questions in related, relation to this passage here with the, the help of artificial intelligence or AI. Now, the great thing about this, it will mark the correct answer and then add incorrect answers and mix them up so there's a true-false, a bit of multiple choice, a bit of long answer in there as well. Um, and as you can see here, look at this, absolutely sensational. What is the name of the astronomer, Hubble, uh, who the telescope is named after? Right, so it's generated them and marked the correct answer and added like relevant, incorrect astronomers that aren't even in the passage uh, to really test the comprehension of a student. Okay, what is the Hubble telescope? A spacecraft, a tool to study, an instrument to explore space. We just said that, didn't we? A machine to create artificial gravity. Here's a true false. Is the Hubble the only telescope being repaired in space? True or false? And can the Hubble see things that are too far away? It will also generate uh, short response and long response questions. Now I can go through and edit this and change this um, or use this if I want. And uh, then I've got my comprehension coach, I've got my reading coach, uh, I've got my literacy aspect. And then we have our learning accelerators, which we'll talk about much later in the show um, to generate these passages. So. That's really exciting with what we're doing there. Now, I am going to jump on over probably the last live element in this regard. We have many more, but I'm conscious of time. Rubrics, all right? In New South Wales, we mark to a rubric. I'm sure you mark to a rubric as well. We have AI generation to help you make some accessible rubrics, okay? Now, this is the beginning of this rubrics journey. All right, so you may have many questions, especially when it comes down to rubrics, but it will be expanded over time. So I'm not going to create a rubric from scratch. I'm going to create a rubric using AI to help me. OK, so let's click that button and it is our Mars presentation. All right, just as you saw. And uh, let's say a rubric that assesses a PowerPoint presentation on Mars, uh, we will be assessing the content, presentation, um, visuals, and a written report. Check. Oh. We will also be assessing the quality of information 
and facts about Mars. Again, another long-winded Mr. Bowser over-explanation. I'm trying to feed the system some information here. Uh, what grade level? We agreed grade four previously. Rubric scale, excellent, good, fair, poor, exceeds standard, meets standard, below standard, yes or no. Um, I'll go with the excellent, good, fair, uh, fair or poor. What criteria will we evaluate? Content accuracy, visual appeal. These are buzzwords I put in there. Remember, presentation skills and the written report quality. Sounds great to me. And then we'll create the rubric using a and watch this, watch the time-saving magic kick in here. So you can see that uh, students' presentation is accurate and detailed information about Mars. Students' presentation is mostly accurate. Uh, the students' presentation has some accurate. Now you can go through and obviously change the different types of prompt engineering, regenerate the different types of wording, add a bit more detail. To Amanda's point, it's all about practicing, right? That prompt engineering, practicing those words that you put in there. As you can see, I've just upped the ante and added a lot more detail under excellent, good, and fair. The student's presentation is highly accurate and detailed, covering a wide range of information about Mars presentation, well researched, and provides in depth analysis on the topic. <laughs> so <laughs> you can see that has saved me so much time. Now, if I'm marking to a syllabus or whatnot, I, I can go in there and manually. Uh, add my syllabus content. You probably you've got it in your hand, right? Can we feed in our own rubric and syllabus? Just watch this space, right? Watch this space. That's all I'm going to say right now. I can add more levels. I can modify it to my heart's consent. I can modify the rubric using uh, AI here. Change my prompt. Do I want it concise, which we had it before? Do we want it expanded? It's incredible. There's some very, very, very cool things. Mind blowing. All right, very cool things coming there. So I am going to. Uh, leave that and uh move on okay we need to move on we need to move on but uh that i wanted to show you that live component because i just think that is you know where we're going in education is so exciting so exciting um so i'm going to bring up what's new in, in edu we're going to talk about some more teams updates specifically and then uh, some other updates as we go through so let's resume our slide deck here. Um, there's lots to talk about. I will just play the classwork modules video, which you can see on screen there. You might have to hit click play there and you can see how that will also work for classroom modules. But we're bringing it with Reflect, which you'll see in one of the next slides as well. So having an AI help you generate social, emotional and reflection questions to gauge how your students went during that Mars presentation, right? And you can see all the work that it's made here for your class module set using classwork modules so very excited like i said some of the most exciting updates i've ever seen in a suite of products for for education especially primary and secondary teachers now this slide here you can see that uh we have some uh, ai generated social emotional learning prompting questions that is generating the educator so the ai will help you create them just like the rubric and the assignments instructions uh send them out to your students and then have a look at the insights, the feeling monsters that we have. So uh, rather than you come up with, you know, how are you traveling with the class content, you'll kind of have a look at what work you're doing and have specific questions around the work you're doing if you choose to use them. All right. Again, it's about saving you time. Now we have some updates to speaker coach and mass coach, right, which uh, I'm going to let Amanda talk to later on when she covers learning accelerators. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. But uh, again, AI is here to help students improve their speaker fluency. And we have a new dashboard for educators. Really exciting. The pitch, the punctuation, the body language, or sorry, the pronunciation, I should more or less say. I need speaker coach. And it will coach them as they're speaking again trying to take more of that burden off you uh, rather than running around doing a running record reading progress or you know sitting there and listening to speeches one to one which you can do don't get me wrong or if it's a hybrid situation you have more options now and students can be coached in real time so some really cool slides here about what it's going to look like and what's going to feel like in Microsoft Teams, like how many filler words they used, how many uh, pitch variations did they do? What's What was their pronunciation uh, like when they're saying certain words like physical or physical, 
right? I even get my words tied into a tongue sometimes, right? <laughs> and you can see the insights. It gives you amazing data about how students are speaking, how they're, they're you know, sharing that Mars presentation in front of the class or sharing it with me and reporting back on their research paper. Um, I can turn on speaker coach and capture some real detailed analytics. Now, uh, preview for using generative AI, all right, assignment instructions, rubrics and classwork is available. Okay, uh, we will share this post uh, edu day. Okay, so uh, look, there's no guarantee you get in. Uh, they could be absolutely inundated with requests, but they they have said I'm ha we're happy to share this. You're happy to uh, talk to your IT, talk to your tenant, say hey, there's a preview. Could we uh, potentially apply to have a bit of an early play around and see how this fits in with the scheme of, you know, our tenancy and our policies? So there's a preview available. Uh, don't worry about that for now because we'll make sure you get that in post. Okay, real quick, going to go through this uh, at light speed again because Amanda's going to talk about how you can organise uh, a stream of classwork in this regard anyway. But classwork is here, as we mentioned. You can now make modulated units of work, all right? You can now reuse, right, your units of work. That was a huge request. So you could make a term's worth of modules and then next year you're teaching that exact same subject and all of the resources and the videos that you've made and the instructions you can just reuse them again. You don't have to put them together again. You can plug in those modules that you spent some time setting up or generative AI setting up and you tweaking and reuse them again. There is a video right there. Again, don't worry if you don't have time to watch this because we'll make sure that you get a copy of the presentation later on that you can actually see. You can select it from another class. So I might have five different science classes. I don't want to set up classwork five different times, right? If Especially if we're teaching more or less the same thing with a bit of differentiation, uh, you can see here how that particular uh, plays out and comes comes into effect by selecting the type of modules from the different class you'd like to reuse. Also opens up the fact sharing is caring, right? You can have another teacher teaching another team's class that made banger resources and you want to use them. Sorry, my 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 crude word of wow that's an amazing resource but that's how we say it in school right you see something and you're like wow right so uh you can use them to using rework which is super exciting um save you a lot of time you have multiple teams improved grading support is here and this was a big one for me alternative grading schemes you might look at this and be like eh. but i played around with this and these are quite cool so basically mm -hmm. uh you know we don't always teach to uh, a progressive grading schema where you get somewhere between 90 and 100, you get somewhere between 80 to 90 and 70 and 60 and so forth. Um, so now you can have alternative grading, like whether you pass or failed, whether you got an A, B, C or D, whether you got a fair or excellent, whether it was uh, you know, a, a non-specific percentage and it was more about the big picture learning. You can use different types of grading schemas now, okay, um, which gives great flexibility to how you assess work and content it doesn't actually have to be more or less you know uh, a numerical value anymore and you can see there in the video they're selecting a, whether it's a letter or a presentation that will change the different types of options you have to assess their grading right so different grading schemas are really cool different types of weighted categories are here too so you know as a hse teacher we have to always have like an assessment weighted 40 percent right or you might have to have in-class tasks weighted 20 percent now you can actually weight and tag different types of work to a weighted category and assign them. So when you mark them, you automatically weight that category, which is super cool. Yeah, Amanda, jump in. I was just going to say, Andrew, somebody said once upon a time that Teams was never really meant to be a learning platform. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I'm just I, loving it, like right? <laughs> so much here and and you like getting very close to just going Teams. Some schools are doing it. Very exciting times. Yeah, and I probably should also add that there's an AI coming to help you analyze your rubric trends too, right? So if you are using a rubric, uh, if you are using weighting categories, the AI will help you crunch themes and patterns with those weighted categories and how students are performing in certain tasks and certain weighted categories. Um, again, sweet. taking more of the administration out of your hands if you choose to do so. Remember, it's 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 an optional toggle, but it's also an optional. I want to make my own. I want to use it even if the toggle is on, right? So I've been playing around for the weighted categories. Um, 
I advise you do so too, because most, let's face it, most tasks you set out throughout the term and you know exactly how much each task is going to be weighted, which adds up to a total and you feed that to your report. So that's definitely worth playing around with. Um, a few learning accelerator updates. Again, not going to go into too much detail, but remember our learning accelerators are reading, mathematics, well-being, social emotional learning, speaker, search, and insights, right? So speaker coach, search coach, and insights. You're going to see some great videos and some great content on using some of those learning um, accelerators, which is really cool. Uh, but they are just part of a wider stack. Don't forget, if your school is thinking about using Microsoft, we have our instructional tools. You know, the tools you love, PowerPoint and OneNote and Whiteboard and Minecraft. But on top of that, we have this layer of learning accelerators to help the students be coached, right? Whether it's reading progress or whether it's using speaker or, or mathematics. Um, and this is great. You know, this is an issue I had was that when you do something like uh, reading progress, and this is direct feedback came out to a, a school. Um, I won't shout the school out, but that this particular teacher that might be sharing a video today uh, basically said when they were using reading progress and they're in the room, it can be quite, you know, can pick up other words if multiple students are trying to read something in different corners or there's chatter going out. So we had a noise suppression, right? AI noise suppression that detects the student voice reading to the laptop, tries to isolate that student voice to improve the clarity and the content. So someone can't just come in there and start saying different words um, and messing up the system. Or if you're in a big Busy environment, like what schools are, the AI will detect the pitch and the tone of the student and, and hone in and mask everything out, which is a huge improvement, right? As you can see there, you can turn that on or off, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, we talked about generative passage with AI, which is part of our reading progress learning accelerator, comprehension questions using AI. Um, new insights are here for educators too, which is cool, like little spotlight cards on how the students are reading, some of the trouble words they have or challenging words in relation to that particular student and all the data you love about their accuracy rate compared to other students or maybe your cohort on a wider level. Now, this is a this is a big one. This is a big one. Uh, we have some reading coach announcements for you today, all right? We have a brand new AI-powered personalized practice at home reading coach for Windows. So no longer do you have to specifically use reading coach through the assignments feature in Microsoft Teams. You now have the ability to install or use reading coach on Microsoft Windows and for the web. Okay, so uh, again, a nice little quick live demo. The platforms here are coach.microsoft.com if you are checking it out on the web. LMS, so learning management system integration is coming. So if you're using a different system, you'll be able to plug this in, which is great. And in February, you'll have access to this in Windows. Okay, so feel free to click this link right here. All right, coach.microsoft.com will take you to a nice little homepage where you can sign up for some more previews. I'm just giving away previews today. Like, um, I'm not going to say a popular TV personality, but I'm giving away previews today uh, i'm going to show you what that looks like and i think this is really really helpful to see um on on a computer so this is if i type in dun, dun, la, reading coach for windows okay so you can sign up for the private preview of this but as you can see here it is outside of teams focused on literacy needs and again it has that ai built into it. So do I want to generate a story using AI? Do I want to read a passage from a predetermined library? Do I want to add my own passage? Do I want to have a look at some of the achievements, right, that I can learn as a, or earn as a student, have a look at the history? So let's create a story using AI. Again, keeping it very simple, very light. We scale up as we develop this on. And uh, you can see some categories here, animals, fantasy, science fiction. Let's do astronaut. Let's stick to the space theme. So I'm picking an astronaut and the location is space and the reading difficulty level, let's just go three. And you can see the different examples here, four, five. Immersive reader is here for accessibility. Okay, so don't worry about accessibility. Uh, let's keep it quite moderate, grade four or reading level four. And I can see how that's changed the words. Choose level four and it's generating my passage for reading. This is Reading Coach, where if you don't say something correctly, it will coach the student on the pronunciation. So case and point. Now I'm using my mic in Teams, so it might be a little 
we'll see. Let's go. Start reading. I'm stuck with reading. Lilla, Lilla always knew space was full of surprise, surprises, surprises. She was an astronaut who had spent, you get the idea. Okay. Now, uh, as you go through, you can see here the results, the pronunciation accuracy, the reading time, and some of the words I need to practice, some of the words I struggled with in my Lost in Space uh, mystery. So I can practice these words. All right. Mm hmm. Astronaut. <sighs> Astronaut. Now, it it was like, bow, bow, because I obviously said it before it told me to do it. But that's, you know, look at that. Woo, go me. Um, <laughs> you can see. So anyway, so that is a quick demo of uh, some of the great tools. There are some, a lot of exciting things coming. Uh, that That's the last of my live demos because I could be here all day showing you what's new and on giving away previews like it's it's candy corn. Uh, but let's not do that. How American am I now, Amanda? Candy corn. Me watching too many American shows. Let's talk about how to apply for that reading progress. Click on this website, coach.microsoft.com will take you to uh, a website where you can apply um, for the private preview. I'm just actually having a look on that site there. Uh, free public preview, I should say. Let me get that right. All right, so any questions you have regarding that, please contact us after the fact there. Now, I've got less than 15 minutes, so let's continue on with some reflect updates, which is really cool. So as I mentioned, Reflect now has exit tickets, entry tickets. AI is coming to Microsoft Reflect, but we do have some new resource kits. And Amanda, if you could put this into the chat for us, please. If you go to reflect.microsoft. Sorry, ak.reflect, um, ak.ms slash reflect, I should say. I'm going to call this out because there's some new Reflect resources. There's a new coloring book that students can do as a brain break. And I literally saw uh, St. Benedict's use Reflect to colour in while they're waiting for other students to par um, finish their tasks, to calm them down, social, emotional learning aspects of being creative to calm the mind. The new breathing exercises that students can do. There's stretch exercises that you can put on the whiteboard for Microsoft Reflect. There's a number of different activities to help your little ones stay calm while you're transitioning between assignments or content or classwork or whatever it may be. Worth exploring in the chat that Amanda has there, all right? Reflect resources you can see there that you can have a look. But we've built these into Microsoft Teams and they is now available on the web. So if you click on the What's New section at the top, you can learn a bit more about some of the Reflect. Ah, we have PDF uh, enhancements for Microsoft Teams, which is pretty cool. You can now uh, ink on PDFs in Microsoft Teams. You can highlight on PDFs. You can distribute uh, PDF files from assignments, which is very cool. You can scan as a PDF from your phone and upload it to the Teams or to an assignment. So it's a great uh, diversity with using uh, PDFs. We have new personalized due dates in Teams, as Amanda said, right? You know, is it an LMS, isn't it? Right, you have different due dates. Rather than ever everything being due at the same time, you have students that are on leave, students that had to go to a hospital, that got sick. You want to personalize when things are due. We now have that within MS Teams there as well. And probably one of my favorite updates, there is a reminder. Right, you can now like send a little ping to those students that haven't handed something in. Now, I've seen teachers do this in the room and say, you know, I'm looking at insights, you haven't handed in, but now, now you can ping those students that haven't submitted their task before recess at 12 o'clock today, and it'll send them a little notification pop up on their screen and say, hey, you need to hand this in, teachers waiting for your content. Super cool, right? It's, it's the little things, it's the little things that make a big difference, and you can see in the video right here on screen uh you select the students that you want to kind of tap on the shoulder or ping or send a reminder and away it goes now there are some updates around the parent connection um if you're unaware teams now has the ability to connect educators and families together with our new system called school connection aka parent connection right so uh what is it 
Well, it allows guardians to stay engaged with the educators. So if you're running a Microsoft Teams class, okay, uh, now you can actually have a parent connection, which is in the class teams, uh, where you can reach out to the guardian or the parent of the student and share assignment details, uh, share what's due, have a quick chat. And it's, it's really customizable in the sense that, you know, windows of connections open up so you're not getting connected at inappropriate times. Um, definitely worth having a bit of a look. We, we have a new mobile app. As you can see that the parents get to stay informed. It's very polished. It's very refined. It's educator and student protection built in mind. All right. I want to be really clear about that. Don't think this opens up a window um, for, you know, 24-7 uh, <laughs> support chat at any point in time. Not that case, right? It's been designed for an educator uh, focus and community. And you can see here, see high priority items for each learner like work that is past due or left to turn in this week, check out assignments due in the next two weeks. Proactive. It's just more transparency if you choose to allow a parent and guardian to have a window of transparency during a period of time. All right, maybe there's some stuff going on in the background that you need that connection for. And you also have teacher feedback. So see points and comments for graded work returned to each learner, walk through the rubrics posted by teachers, reach out to teachers about specific assignments. Again, uh, you have to enable this. You have to talk to your IT. There's some, some background stuff that you need to know, but it is available, right? You can use it um, here. And you can see here, there's all different instructions on how this looks and how this feels. Um, and how the parents connect using the connect feature. So um, school connection and parent connection are great little uh, add-ons. Okay, last 10 minutes here, additional updates that we have and what's new. Uh, Miss Erid, who's a Scottish MIE, has made the most amazing one pages on all of your favorite Microsoft products. Feel free to click this link right here. It is fun and useful Microsoft Education batch guides, right? Color coded, very pretty. So feel free to click them. I can see, yeah, I can see the the reactions coming through. I think they're awesome too, um, especially if staff are new, right? New to Microsoft products. Uh, we have everything there from you know how to use uh, Reading Coach and how to use Excel and how to use Word and how to use Spell Check, as in the new AI Spell Check. Um, Stream every every product. <laughs> Don't quote me. A lot of products are there. All right, a lot of products are there. Definitely check them out. They are so cool. I promise an AI I didn't put them together. Any real MIE Scottish MIE put them. We call it a treasure trove of Microsoft products. As you can see, there's there's great. There's I think there's over like twenty different product guides right there. Uh, AI. Right, AI is super topical. I've seen it in the chat. I've seen uh, educators say, well, what about students? What about helping students understand this era of AI? And Minecraft, well, the Minecraft course, what best way to help them understand AI by gamifying AI, right? We have a very uh, scaffolded Minecraft lesson with teacher educator resources, worksheets about what AI is, about what world they are walking into when they finish obviously their schooling career so this is definitely really cool it, it was our last era coded december so it's still quite new uh again uh you can download that for free because it's part of the arrow code definitely worth checking out especially the teacher resource so if you're looking at an entry point to get students excited or invested or interested about what ai is from an academic point of view Right there, we have you covered. Uh, we also have, this is quite cool, the investigators, right? So uh, this was just released around Media uh, Literacy Week uh, a few months back or a few weeks back even. Um, and this is a new immersive world to improve literacy skills. So you can probably see a trend here. You're using generative AI, you're re using reading progress, using um, a lot of these great tools. But then you have these visually, spatially aware uh, learning resources that you can use it's part of your obviously learning platform, such as Minecraft, where we've got learning objectives and educator guide and presentation slides on how to get them upskilled using literacy through Minecraft education, right? Which is super cool. So a lot of good content there. Uh, Make code. Don't know if you're into STEM or you're into coding, but Make code has had a huge update. Uh, if you've never heard of Make code, which many educators can't, we actually have our own coding platform. So if you heard of Scratch and Tinker, we actually have our own coding platform called MakeCode, which is free, all right, makecode.com. And it's for micro bits. You can make your own little retro arcade games. It's all education focused. Even Minecraft 
can be coded using make code a lot of updates using microsoft make code definitely worth checking out if you want to do some visual block based coding which i know a lot of schools have to do as part of their syllabus right especially from k to six and then general purpose text-based coding when they get into secondary um and even better and i think this is super cool any games they develop using make code they can then play those games on a real xbox like a real consumer dev kit get mum and dad get fellow students to test authentically their games that they coded right uh in make code on the web and then play them on a real xbox so i know a lot of schools have xboxes a lot of kids have xboxes at home great way to kind of blend education and coding and computational thinking and problem solving to turning that into a real authentic game system so that is now available on xbox which is super cool new whiteboard template experiences are here i know you've been waiting for them i hear you have been waiting for them uh, now anything you make in terms of teaching and learning resources we have a new whiteboard template system okay so you can share them you can save them and share them with other educators share them with other geography teachers and english teachers all of your graphics and your gifts and your powerpoint slides and your scribbles on an authentic whiteboard experience. We also have live text, which is pretty cool. So if you're collaborating, which is a huge part of staff planning, you will see the text change dynamically as someone uh, recorrects my spelling mistake that I always make on a whiteboard, right? So live text is a thing, it's out there. Loop components, big announcement in the education space. Loop is here to stay for education A3 and A5, which is cool. Um, Loop is now available in whiteboard it's available in Outlook, it's coming soon to OneNote. Uh, I do apologize if you don't know what Loop is. Uh, highly recommend loop.microsoft.com and uh, have a bit of a look-see there. But uh, it is a great collaboration tool, a dynamic collaboration tool, and it's been embedded into all of the productivity tools in Office, right? Again, asterisk, Mr. Bowser speak. When he says all, he means a lot. <laughs> okay, so Excel and Whiteboard and Teams, uh, OneNote, Outlook, it's in a lot of places right now. Um, we're even bringing polls into Whiteboard. So now you can have like little embedded polls that you can put in a Whiteboard and you can take that poll and paste it in email. It's the same poll, so it updates everywhere. Really cool stuff um, there as well. Stream has had a big update to probably one of my favorite for, for content creation. You can now tag subject areas in Stream. So if you make a video about geography, you make a video about history, you can tag that as geography and history. And then when you're searching for the words geography history, you'll find those videos. Super cool. And I know teachers have been asking for this. You now, well, soon, I should say, I've got coming soon. Cut and trim your stream videos in the web, right? In stream, like you used to with old stream. But now you can trim your videos. So if you make a recording like what we're doing today, hello, everybody, uh, and I had a Freudian slip, I would go into stream, all right, and just chop that without having to re-upload the whole thing or re-download it and put in a video editor and change it. It's natively built in to the browser very, very, very soon, okay? So, uh, oh, there's my stream, there's, look, look, there's my tagging videos. Look at that, I've tagged some literacy resources uh, there as well. Tagging's a big thing, watch this space, especially when you're saying organize an educator. All right, less than four minutes, enhanced text, pen and ink gestures are here in Microsoft OneNote, the new, Microsoft OneNote, it's pretty cool because OneNote and note taking is a huge, uh, has a huge synergy, I'm gonna say more or less. I use my finger sometimes when I lose my pen down the couch as we always do. But now you can actually do some cool stuff with AI in OneNote where we'll do text prediction, as in, you know, you, you have doctor's handwriting like I do. Apologies to any doctors out there, it's a saying. <laughs> Don't hate me. It's, you know, if, you, if you're messy, you can have it convert um, you can uh, scribble out things just by using your pen. Your pen is becoming a more natural extension of the editing process, which is pretty cool. Even um, uh, like selecting things with the pen and, and yeah, converting all your scribbles into like a more creative way of reading so someone else can read it. It's pretty cool. Uh, faster note-taking text prediction in OneNote. Look at this. Thanks to good old uh, AI, we have uh, faster text prediction. So if you're typing clickety clackety away on your keyboard, uh, you'll see text prediction pop up in OneNote where it's predicting what you're going to say. Like, for example, if I say, what days of the week can you, it, it's going to pretty much fill that out confidently with what I want to say. And it will learn 
based on how you most commonly ask the same thing. Save you a bit of time. You've seen that in a few other applications come through like email, but it's cool. It's coming to OneNote. It has, we have page previews in Microsoft Teams now. So when you're attaching work, you can see the work before you attach it. Quality of life improvement. Love that one. OneNote for the web has been updated with new bones, just like Teams has been updated for new bones. You'll see a new aesthetic here. Getting ready for bigger and better things. Hmm. Watch that space, like that mode switching. If you like the Windows 10 version, you like the 2016 version. Um, some very cool things happening in that space. It's faster, it's snappier. The sync problems have disappeared, so that's pretty cool. Um, looking at the time there, we've got new Steam slash STEM activities. I put this in because I think this is really cool. We have a new numeracy world for Minecraft where you can teach students how to do mathematics in the style of an ancient Egyptian historical project, super cool. We have new make code, STEM and STEAM activities. So if you're looking for an entry point into coding or programming and you want to make it a little bit fun, you can see some uh, resources here that we've curated on a single page, right? So I know there's some great stuff uh, out there for, for lovely STEM teachers. I don't want to leave you guys out as well. Now, last uh, three slides. I have. Look at that. How's that for timing? Wow. All right. On time. And we have a few courses here that Amanda has mentioned before. I want to highlight these because these come up, especially around the topic of AI. I mean, every session has had AI in it so far, right? AI for educators, resources and learning, the one-stop shop. Click that link right there, Mr. Bowser. Click that link. Oh, oh, sorry. Go back. Let Mr. Bowser click that link. Make sure you put the right link. Yes, he did. Look at that. Uh, AI for Educators, Resources and Learning Opportunities. So these are self-paced uh, courses that you can do. Just like how you got a badge earlier today that Amanda put in. Get some more badges. Get some more certificates. Show your fluency using artificial intelligence in the classroom and teaching practice. Probably my favorite, if you're reading some of them, is uh, empower educators to explore the potential of artificial intelligence. That's a one I highly recommend. And based on Amanda's session, explore generative AI copilot in Bing. That's the free one, right? That Amanda was showing this morning. Detailed course there, step by step to help you, which is that one right there. All right, highly recommend. Super cool. Um, so a lot of resources there, as you can see. I had a thousand slides I can put in here. I had to keep it concise, but this. It's never been an exciting opportunity, whether it's Word or OneNote or Whiteboard, Teams. Uh, a lot of this generation that's coming in, which, again, we have control over as educators and your tenant does, is an absolute game changer. And uh, I couldn't be more excited to literally work in the classroom. Um, and you, you'll see some of this come about when Amanda does her session and shows some of these teacher videos on how educators are using some of these tools. So thank you so much for having me. It's 1.15. I appreciate the time. Any questions in the chat? And I'm sure you'll have some. I'll do my best to answer them.